welcome everybody a very very warm welcome indeed from myself and Demetra as co-directors of the Bristol Digital Futures Institute um, we are delighted to be here at this our first symposium and very much hope that it's going to be the first of many opportunities hopefully some of them face to face as well as online in the not not too distant future we're also really very very thrilled that our audience today reflects the ambitions that we have in BDFI for the partnership ecosystem that it combines people from university research, from our partners in government, in industry, in local communities, that we're bringing together old friends, some friends who we've been working with for a while, as well as new friends joining us perhaps for the first time, but shared by the common purpose that Hugh has just outlined, which is to change the way we do digital innovation, the way we create technologies, <clears throat> so that we might drive towards more sustainable, prosperous and inclusive futures. So Demetra and I just have a short 15 minutes uh, and we're going to take you on a journey in that 15 minutes from, from where we started with BDFI a little over two years ago through to the developments that have taken place in the last two years and what we plan to do next. And I hope that those of you who may have heard some of that early story before will find it really interesting to consider some of those foundational aspirations and principles in the light of the past two years, which have changed a lot for BDFI as well as for the wider world out there. And that for those of you who haven't heard this before, this, this will provide a really short, sharp introduction to BDFI and what, what we seek to do. So next slide, please. <clears throat> Excuse me. So BDFI is a university research institute, and what that means is that we work across all forms of expertise in all faculty faculties across the University of Bristol. And our aim is to pioneer transformative approaches to digital innovation. Now that transformative word, what it is that we seek to transform, encompasses the development of in-depth and systematic understanding of those interactions that Hugh was describing in, in his opening um, in, in introduction which is to grow understandings of how the social processes, social practices interact with digital technologies. So we use this word socio-technical um, and how those together shape possibilities for a range of different futures. Particularly, our aim is to consider how we might tip those futures in one direction or several preferred directions towards inclusive, prosperous and sustainable societies. We were established in, in 2019 from foundational uh, interactions across engineering and social sciences and with partners from across all sectors. We have very generous initial funding from Research England and also matched funding from our partners about whom we'll say a little bit more in a moment, plus generous funding from the university as part of its commitment to the Temple Quarter Enterprise Campus, its wider research strategy, which touches in many ways on BDFI and our ambitions, but also the University of Bristol's commitment to becoming a global civic university. Next slide, please. It's really important to underscore some of the points that Hugh made here about why we're doing this, why we need BDFI, why we need it now. And that just means emphasizing our foundational principles. So the first principle is the understanding that digital technologies are increasingly woven into the fabric of our society and that that may well be for the better and that it may sometimes be for the worse. We cannot take one or other of those kind of more optimistic or, or pessimistic scenarios. We need to address them both together. We must be harnessing the opportunities of digital innovation and technology creation at the same time as we think about the challenges. And if we're serious about doing that, then we have to create new forms of knowledge and new understandings of how the social and the technical interact and what that means for the way in which we do innovation. What that means for the way we do innovation is that we must develop new socio-technical methodologies, practical and applied ways of harnessing that interdisciplinary collaboration towards the process of technology creation, technology development, spin out and so on so that we can start to open up futures that are more prosperous, inclusive and sustainable in quite deliberate ways. This demands new ways of working across the disciplines, as we've mentioned already, across the sectors, as we've mentioned already. And it demands in particular, we believe, the opportunity to create facilities and spaces that are designed to support the growth, 
and nurturing and prospering of that ecosystem because at the moment we don't have those collaborative facilities and spaces. Next slide please. We're developing this through investment as I mentioned from the Research Partnership Investment Fund and this is that investment in a snapshot. These are our founding 27 partners, welcome to many of them who are joining us today and we'll be growing our partnership ecosystem over time. The facilities, as I mentioned, the opportunities, <clears throat> excuse me, for collaboration sit in the middle of this diagram on the right of your screen. And round that, we build the collaboration across the very in-depth forms and diverse forms of research expertise that we have at Bristol, about which Dimitri will say in a moment. This is not exhaustive, this list on here, this is indicative, uh, there's not room to put everything on. And then all of that sits within the partnership ecosystem so that we can work with those diverse partners joining up the research expertise and collaborating, collaborating together through our facilities. I'm going to pass over to Dimitra now, who's going to tell you a bit more about what we've been doing in the past couple of years to work towards that. Dimitra. Um, thank you. Hello, everybody. I see a lot of friends and colleagues in the audience, so welcome from me as well. And thank you, Susan, for presenting in such an elegant way our vision. Um, we were funded just over two years ago, and we have spent the majority of this in some form of lockdown. However, we have been quite, build, quite busy to build our foundations, the foundations of our institute. And there are different steps that I would like actually uh, to, to describe to you. Uh, the first one is to develop collaboration and leverage key and core digital capabilities within our university, but also within our city region. And this is not an exhaustive list, but there are some core capabilities that we are engaging very closely during the last two years. So listing these capabilities, future networks and future internet is quite a key one. Our region has a quite a large capacity in terms of uh, uh, the telco, telco research and also telco industry. And probably quite a lot of you, you know us in the region of doing some pioneering work on future mobile networks 5G and now embarking our journey towards 6G. Also, if we are looking at Bristol, really is known all over the world of being a leader in terms of smart city propositions. And quite a lot of the, the work, this pioneering thinking and actually deployment of smart city services, it has happened from very early on in collaboration between our local governments and researchers within our university. Digital societies, that goes without saying, and this is really at the very core of our institute, so huge capacity within our social sciences and humanities of colleagues that are doing fundamental research and groundbreaking work around digital societies and futures. And of course, we have a strong focus on cybersecurity, on privacy, on trust, on quantum security as well. So, and, and really when we are looking at quantum, we are looking post-digital. So now we are talking about digital, but post-digital also is in our horizon. So those are key fundamental capabilities. We are also engaging very closely with key sectors that actually they are either going through digital transformation or they have a need to transform digitally in the near future. So some of these key sectors is media and creative manufacturing, key strength in the southwest, and digital manufacturing particularly, and health. Of course, all of these are underpinned by fundamental research and also focus within our institution, like, for instance, data science, AI machine learning, our focus on energy efficiency and sustainability, our actually research into futures, which we are going to discuss quite a lot, through our two panels today. Our approaches and methodologies to collaboration and co-production focus on inequality, or how we, we actually address inequality and inclusion, and of course, a strong commitment to commercialization and businesses. Next slide, please. So deep dive now on what we have done internally in terms of building our own institutional infrastructure. And that was mentioned by Hugh and Susan as well. So first of all, of course, we have established the academic leadership 
uh, present between Susan and myself, but also other leadership. We have appointed an operational director, uh, Jenny Nap, and also all our core staff is completed at the moment. We engage with our partners, 27 initial partners, very diverse ones. They were actually very much involved in our initial proposition, but this partner ecosystem is increasing in terms of numbers, in terms of diversity. We are making a home for ourselves and we are building our research facilities. And I'm going to talk a little bit more uh, later. Um, we have been uh, recruiting what we call BDFI academics. So people with different backgrounds, academics with different backgrounds, that they come with a specific focus to do digital futures research from their own perspective. So we have appointed uh, seven academics at the moment. They are in post. And we are moving to appoint 20 academics in total in the next two years. We also have a large group of affiliated academics. And those are academics, existing colleagues, that they are actually, their research, their research relates or benefits, or we are benefiting by the research with actually BDFI. And of course, it's not only academics, it's a very large group of experts. And that includes from PhD students, from uh, uh, postdoctoral researchers, but also professional, professional services that they actually engage with us. And being academics, with our partners, we have engaged in a number of research propositions supported or driven by BDFI with quite considerable success there already. Next slide, please. Right, I talked about our home and we're pretty excited about this. So we have new facilities. We are refurbishing um, Vic an old Victorian um, industrial uh, building at the back of the Temple Mead station, which is going to house BDFI, but also other research facilities. So what you see here in the right is some recent photographs of the refurbishment going on and some architectural actually designs of how the facility is going to look like. So we are very close actually to finish the, the refurbishment of the first stage of this building. And we are due to move into our new facilities in April 22. So a few months ago, a, a, a few months from now. Now, this actual building is going to house some key facilities for us. And the first two, uh, Hugh also mentioned those, is going to be a quite breakthrough facility. We believe that is what we call the reality emulator. This is, going, this is going to be a socio-technical sector agnostic digital twin, which is actually is going to give us the ability to create digital models of future systems and being able to experience them real time. The second important facility is Neutral Labs. That is a purpose-built facility, uh, which is going actually to be able to support collaboration and co-creation between our academics and our partners. So this is a fully agile environment where actually we can support partnerships, we can support research, we can support co-creation and collaboration across our whole ecosystem. Later on, there are coming facilities that they are going actually to link us very closely with the sectors that I mentioned before like the instrumented auditorium for the media and creative sectors, uh, digital health, and also cyber. So our plan is, as I said before, we are moving into our new home in spring, in April, and then we are looking to have fully integrated set of all the facilities that you see above by the end of 2023. I pass back to Susan now. Next slide, please. Thank you. So. Doing all of this over the past two years has, has been a challenge, I have to say, uh, or we have to say, specifically Brexit, but also COVID have changed the conditions in which we are working from what we'd expected and have raised some really fundamental new questions for us about digital innovation and about socio-technical futures. 
We had planned originally to launch at the end of March, and then at the end of March, along with everyone else, including our partners, we were thrown into firefighting, evaluating and reevaluating and adjusting to the new conditions. Specifically for us from BDFI, the what, the when and the how of digital futures shifted, the landscape shifted. The pandemic raised really big new questions about previously assumed or taken for granted futures. It raised new challenges for many, but also, of course, uh, new opportunities for digital innovation during the pandemic as we shifted online through health, education, um, many other aspects of everyday life. We've taken our lead from our partners on how we approach that. For some, this has not been the time to discuss futures. For others, it's been exactly the time to discuss futures. But two things are clear. The pandemic has changed where, when and how digital technologies are woven into everyday life for families, for communities, for businesses, for government, as well as others. And without doubt, this has made the mission of BDFI more urgent and more important than it ever was. Secondly, in our responses to the pandemic and in the deployment and innovation of digital technologies during the pandemic, a range of possible futures are in the making. We may think we're in the present and we don't have time to think about the future, but we're always making the future. The way that we conceptualize, that we understand, that we make claims about futures and the things that we do in response opens up some kinds of futures and closes down other futures. The future isn't sitting there waiting for us to arrive. It is active in the choices and practices that we engage in in the present. So this, again, I feel has made BDFI even more important. It's pretty important before, but even more important than, than we had understood and changed the way we think about it with our partners um, in the current period of time. Growing our collaborative capacity to respond robustly and constructively on that new landscape is also a challenge. There are questions of talent. Brexit undoubtedly has changed the recruitment process, certainly for particular sectors and particular disciplines. That has really been an issue. And growing interdisciplinary expertise is not something that you can take lightly or that you take off a shelf and implement overnight. It's a slow process and we need to let it grow. But we are getting there. We are doing that and we are now in the phase of defining our new priorities, shared priorities with our partners, very actively ready to take the next steps. And I'm going to pass back to Dimitra, who will tell you a little bit more about that. So what do we do next? Our immediate action plan rather than the long term plan. I mentioned before, we are making operational of facil our facilities and we are launching in April 22. So the next few months are going to be extremely busy for us. We are also introducing an operational model. And this is actually quite a complex piece of work because our operational model has to reflect the diversity of our researchers and our partners. So it's not one size fits all. And there is a lot of work going. Sometimes it feels that actually the creation of an operational model is research work on its own. Of course, we are pushing forward intellectual leadership. We have now a, a quite a large cohort of uh, dedicated academics and also affiliated academics. So probably you have seen already publications, presentations to conference, uh, more wider public uh, media and so on. We have an ambitious research pipeline. Uh, we are supporting academics across faculties, being a university research institute. And actually, to create that research pipeline, we make a number of interventions, starting with pump priming of initial small ideas at very early stages and going all the way to support our academics and our partners, actually, to a bid for funding for collaborations. We have very strong links already with our region and across our region, but also we are growing our national collaborations. And there are many examples. We don't have time to talk about those, but probably 
uh, please look at our newsletters, subscribe to our newsletters. You can see quite a lot of news reflecting collaborations at the national level. We are working closely with government, with regulators, and really we are looking forward to inform and say policy and regulation. We are looking internationally, of course. We are already having relationships with NSF in the US. We are looking at Horizon Europe. As an example, the Social Sciences New Center of Excellence on Socio Digital Futures that Susan is leading already has established international collaborations spanning from Europe to US to South Africa to Australia. And we are also looking forward, this is not a last point, it's a last point, but it's a very important point. So we are looking very much forward to support translation of our research into commercialization. And that could be in the form of IPR creation, it could be with spin-outs, startups, but also support our industrial partners and the rest of the innovation ecosystem that we are interacting with. And I think with this point, I would like to thank you. And that concludes our joint presentation.